Mr. Chairman, you uh, you have the meeting. Thank you, Joey. Jeannie, uh, you want to go ahead and do the roll call? Stevie will do it, yeah. Or Stevie, I'm sorry. Stevie, you're... Stevie, uh, Stevie, you're... I was trying to yell out, but <laughs> there we go. Nick Bianchi. Lisa Werder Brown. Present. Lloyd Cunningham. Dan DeMarco. Present. <laughs> Lloyd is here. Pat DeMarco. Tina Doucet. Ariam Ford Graver. <coughs> Nick Resoff. I'm here. Mark Heckman. Here. Rebecca Kiernan. Ken Lasada. Here. Ruthie Ann Omer. Stanley Paps. Will Pickering. Present. Mary Ellen Ramage. Here. Tim Rogers. Here. Mark Samponia. Here. Kathy Sapp. Present. Danielle Francesca. Here. Kinsey Casey. Here. Darla Cravada. Max Unker. I'm here. Here, so is Max. A yeah. Second to unmute. Thanks, yes. TV. You moved it around on us. Give me a minute. Computer. <laughs> past 12. With uh, our two vacancies, uh, we have 19 seated members. We only need 10 for a quorum, so it looks like we're plus two. Very good. Welcome to all for the Alka San Advisory Committee meeting of September 28th. You're reminded that this meeting is being recorded. Thank you all for attending. Uh, we have the approval of minutes for June and July. We'll do them separately. Uh, when you make a motion in a second, please give us your name so that we, it makes it easier for Stevie to record. Uh, your pleasure regarding the minutes for the June meeting. I'll make a motion to approve them. Mary Ellen Etna. Ken Lasota, second. Motion and a second. Question on the motion. Being called in favor, give your consent by saying aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Me June me meeting minutes are approved. The July meeting minutes. Uh, Mary Ellen, you want to do the same? Sure. Ken? All right. Yes, Mr. President, I'd second that motion to approve the minutes. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the July minutes. Uh, any questions on the motion? All in favor, give your consent by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have been so ordered. Next item on the agenda is the open house report by Joey Valerian. Joey, how are you doing? Good, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, on the 18th, we did have an in-person open house here at the plant. A beautiful day. Um, just going to run you through with some uh, stats and some pictures of our younger um, visitors. We had 567 in person this year, uh, 500 virtual visitors on our homepage uh, virtual site. We did have 27 vendors down a little bit just because of space limitation, of course, because of COVID. Um, and we did 21 plant tours this year. So as I said, these are just some, uh, some photos that were taken throughout the day. As you can see, there was uh, it's a good crowd of kids this year. Um, people were very engaged. We had a lot of good feedback um, from visitors um, and from vendors alike. We did our clean water stars this year, uh, Pittsburgh Mayor Bill Peduto and Bill Youngblood. Um, who you all know were both on hand and uh, made comments and uh, we had a very nice uh, ceremony for them. Also, we have our SEEK workshops um, as part of Open House. This is where 10 uh, local teachers and organizations come in. Um, this year they were doing an activity around um, uh, green 
green infrastructure and how um, they can do that to protect the planet. So this is the first of our, our five of our workshops this year. And I won't read these to you, but they're just some of our kudos that came in. We're very proud of it, considering that um, you know, it was a very different year to try to do this. And then finally, of course, the uh, family picture every year that we always take. There's all of us masks as well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all I have. Very good, Joey. Thank you. That's an excellent uh, picture. Uh, next item is Karen Fantoni, Alcasan's Director of Finance regarding rate discussions. Karen? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd just like to take a few minutes and just update you where we are with the rate discussion. As you know, back in July, we went through the history of the Alcasan rates and the strategy and the complexity of the tasks that we are undertaking right now. Um, as of this week, the board has all the information to really dig in and to analyze various different rate scenarios. So once they've had a chance to digest that and to come back to us with questions, um, we're hopeful that hopefully in June, um, June, sorry, in October, we will have a rate resolution that will get passed by the board and then we will be able to move forward. Um, and that is where we are with the rates right now. Has, um, have you formed a formal proposal to the board for rates? We have formed various scenarios that they have been provided with. So they are in fact looking through different rate scenarios and they will come to uh, a conclusion as to what they think is the best way to move forward. There is a recommendation on the table from our consultant. Um, so we'll see, we'll see how that moves forward. Okay. Uh, any questions regarding that? Uh, yes, uh, Nick Greesock is, uh, can you share what the consultant is recommending? Not at this time. Nick, I was thinking yeah. of saying same thing, but I, I figured they weren't going to, no one was willing to say Well, I, 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 I heard your line of questioning and uh, I was just trying to take it across the line there, but uh, that's okay. I understand. So we should be able to make that available uh, to the committee before the final vote takes place. Okay. But Do you anticipate when the final vote will be? Not there? at that point right now. Do you know when the final vote will be? That will be in October. Okay, thank you. Okay, update on any other questions regarding the rates. Hearing none, we'll move on to item five, update on clean water assistance program and other customer assistance funds. Jeannie? Yes, we are. Um, thanks very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, we're in the, involved in taking a look through with Dollar Energy at the various ways we can expand outreach to our um, communities. And so I'll be sharing that with the advisory committee uh, as uh, soon as we pull that together. I can also make sure that all of the advisory committee members have, um, have the the both the marketing information and the fact sheet, uh, I'll get that out to you so that uh, you can get it to the municipalities and talk to them about being able to provide this to their low income customers. I had a conversation with Representative Austin Davis and Representative um, Matt Bradford, who is the de Democratic Chair of the State House Appropriations Committee asking about the bill that uh, Representative Davis has introduced to create a state funded uh, low income uh, fund. Basically, they both said very openly that even great bills get changed by the Republicans into something else. That basically, if they have a bill that's coming through, if it's not one of their bills, they gut and replace it with something else. And they've had that happen on a number of things that everybody should have thought was a good idea, but it uh, doesn't happen. Uh, so they don't think that right now 
that we're going to be able to get anything through the um, uh, through the state legislature. The federal government did pass uh, in December of 2020 uh, the Low Income Household Water Assistance Program as part of the COVID uh, pandemic. Um, this bill has $1.138 billion to the program through two different pieces of legislation, the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2021 and the American Rescue Plan Act. Right now, the money is going through the federal HHS, uh, and uh, they have now allocated it to the states, territories, and tribes. Um, the, those grantees are responsible for getting it out to sub-grantees and the people um, who um, need it. It appears, I'm still doing research on it, it appears to be based on arrearages, which of course Alcasan does not carry arrearages. So I'm trying to figure out how we can get it to our municipal partners. It probably will be um, provided to the ultimate user through uh, the Department of Human Services, but they haven't even decided yet which division of the department is gonna do it. They're doing all sorts of research and I think they'll make initial payments in January, 2022. So I'm going to keep watching this uh, for our municipalities. Um, so that's where we are right now. Uh, there is a possibility in the new um, really big budget reconciliation package that there'll be another $500 million in there for this same program. So I'm going to try to figure out how we could get it to your constituents. Okay, Jeannie, any questions? Jeannie, what constitutes low income for purposes of rate assistance? Um, we, I can send that to everybody. It is, there's a federal, it, every year the federal government sends out um, what, the, um, what the income levels are. Mm -hmm. uh, and each agency that funds it themselves decides what the percentage of uh, poverty level uh, is to be met. Alcasan is unique in providing uh, funds from our ratepayers to low income ratepayers. Um, and so other agencies often are getting um, outside money from uh, foundations, et cetera. Uh, so, and again, as you know, our, our situation is that our customers are our municipalities, not the ratepayers. Um, so I will send around to everybody the fact sheet that lists the, uh, the budgetary amounts that median household income uh, based on number of people in the household. Could you also- Yes, Jeannie. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. I just wanted to make a comment. Go, go, Hi, go ahead. Go ahead, Tina. Yeah, I wanted to um, mention that um, I read over some of this. I did a cursory review, but I, I think the limit, you know, is um, $2,500. That's a lot. Um, it can be, uh, the money can go, they can run through both water and sewage. Um, and also, and I, I wasn't aware of the fact you're saying it's only for uh, delinquencies. Well, I know you don't have to have um, a disconnect or a turn off or anything like that. So uh, that, yeah. that's interesting that you um, say that. I thought it could be for a current, you know, a, a bill too. Well, so. and, and we're going to continue to look at this. I, I had someone uh, do the federal research on that and the federal does use rearages, but because there are no regulations yet for how the state is going to do it, you know, we don't know. And so I'm going to continue to keep an eye okay. on this and add more information to it. Okay. And also coming up soon, they are going to be training the vendors. So um, those communities that are interested, you want to make sure that uh, the folks are trained. So, Thanks, Tina. Any other questions? Jeannie, when you send that out, can you let us know what the total amount of aid, or for the lack of a better term, is per, per year across the entire system? And then... Karen, did you want to answer how we come about that? 
I'm sorry, Jean. Um, the, how much do we fund? Uh, how much do we set aside to fund right. or how much right. is actually spent in grants? The amount of money that's actually, we, we fund through Dollar Energy Fund, we put aside a million dollars in that fund. Right now, the grants have been running um, about $200,000 of, of money that's actually being granted out um, that's been steadily increasing every year. Um, it's been it's been going up. Um, so we're going to be taking another look at the grant amounts um, once we get the new rate resolution in place. And we are going to be looking at what we can do to help those that need it the most um, by getting additional funds in that in that grant award. How is the money you are billing the municipality. So how does the individual get aid? Is, is the money given back to the, directly by check to the applicant or does it go back to the project? No, it is not given by check. What it is through Dollar Energy Fund, it is a direct credit to the individual's bill. So because a lot of agencies bill monthly, once a quarter, because Alcasan again bills quarterly, once a quarter they will have a credit on their bill that will reflect their grant amount for that quarter. Okay. And it is related to their sewage fee. So a lot of times the individual customers will have a combined bill for 80 of the municipalities. They'll have a combined bill that will sometimes it will be their sewer and their water, or sometimes it's the, it's the um, municipality's water charge and Alcasan's or you know their sewage charge and Alcasan sewage charge, so it will cover the Alcasan sewage charge component of that, and it'll be a credit. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, we'll move on to item six, which is the regionalization update. Uh, Mike, Mike Lidstrom. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah. Just to update you. Almost. Uh, 70 of the 80 transfer agreements have been mailed out to the municipalities. A number of council has have granted approval uh, for execution of these documents and a few have actually executed the agreements. Um, on the permit side, Michelle and I uh, have kind of started the process of digging into the, the, the permit transfer uh, process. Uh, as many of you are aware, DEP is going to want new permits for these regionalized uh, sewers, or if there was a permit that already existed, they're going to transfer that existing permit. So we're starting to dig, dig, dig into that a little bit and, you know, peel back that onion. We're, the other thing we're looking at also is uh, trying to figure out what's involved with uh, transferring the actual overflows from the municipalities to, to Alcasan. So um, we might get, have to get involved in some microfiche searches of, of permit documents uh, from, from DEP. So we're start trying to start that process uh, with, with AECOM. Um, the other thing we're, we're, we're doing is we're, we're actively tracking the, the repairs that have been made and uh, the, the repairs outstanding in our asset database. And uh, so those are all being tracked and we're, we're keeping keeping track of what's what's remaining and what's outstanding as far as the repairs go. Uh, finally, uh, I just want to uh, note that uh, we do have a, a, a new addition to the regionalization staff and team, a manager of regionalization. Uh, many of you know Julia, she was involved, Julia Spiker, she was involved with uh, uh, Grow and Tim Tim's group. And uh, we're, we're kind of excited to have her uh, on board with us, uh, doing taking taking uh, charge of the regionalization effort. She's going to bring uh, a new a new energy to the process, and I think it's going to be be a good uh, uh, good thing moving forward. Uh, and I would expect to have her involved in some of these uh, discussions or, or these meetings as we we move forward. So please, you know, feel free to reach out to Julia and congratulate her and just, uh, you know, she, she's going to, she's going to be your friend in this whole process. And uh, like I said, we're kind of excited to have, we're very excited to have her involved in this. So and that that's all I have. Thank you. Any questions? 
Um, Mike, this is um, Ruth Ann. Hi, how are you? Hey, Ruth Ann, um, how are you doing? I'm doing great. So, um, aiding transfer agreements, does that represent uh, all of the ones that we're looking for? Is that the total number? Uh, you know, you, you said that 70 yeah, of the 80. Yeah, that's the total number. Uh, uh, AECOM has been working with BAPS to, to uh, draft and get these out uh, to the municipalities, uh, but 80 is the number we have currently. And um, would you say you've been having group hugs or how's it going with, uh, you finally settled with the solicitors, Max got them all squared away. I mean, is, are we just in like paperwork process? Would you say we honestly are still having to work through some issues? Uh, for the most part, I think we're just working through the process um, you know, I, I think, you know, we're just trying to, you know, see, see how this thing, you know, unfolds. I know we're, we're actively communicating with, uh, the municipalities and, uh, you know, as you know, Alexis has been out there keeping track and now it's going to be Julia too, out there keeping track of, uh, the process and just trying to facilitate the whole transfer process and help you along. Um, that, that's how's it going with, um. I know it got it's getting complicated a little bit. We have some third parties that want to buy systems, and uh, uh, how is that all going? Is that just if there's a third party involved, it's just not going to work, or are we? Uh, I'm going to defer to Max on that. He's he's had some discussions. Yes, Dick, I, I would agree with with Mike. I mean, most of the uh, issues with the transfer agreement have been just putting them together and getting the documents and the paperwork. Uh, from time to time, we field mostly just refresher questions of, of, you know, it's been over a year now or so since we really presented to the larger group of solicitors and, and some just may have just a, well, remind me again what we're doing here. And, and those are the, the level of our conversations. And then do know Three Rivers Wet Weather has been answering some and, and funneling some questions and, and providing uh, some guidance that way uh, on the municipal side. But as for you know third party transfers, uh, the, the information that we received with one of those proposals were that the PUC as a regulator you know would not envision uh, one of these you know, multi-municipal uh, trunk lines owned by a PUC regulated entity, a public utility uh, to be transferred. And essentially for two reasons, one, because when the proposal to purchase the assets were put together and are going to be approved by uh, PUC, they included those assets as part of what they would be buying. And then two, they'd be setting their rates. And when we're dealing with a public utility, it's not just that municipality it is system-wide that their rates are supposed to be uh, impacting. So there was a concern uh, from the potential purchaser that they wouldn't be able to transfer these assets you know, into a, a fee simple ownership to Alcasan. And they proposed some alternatives, which really didn't make much sense. It was essentially making Alcasan a regulator uh, this pipe would still be in the possession of this third party, but we would have the ability to go in and, you know, tell them to make corrections or, or anything. But it, it really didn't capture the, the purpose of regionalizations that you had one entity that, you know, specialized and only did sewers and would be there to address these problems on the line. Uh, so we at least told them we weren't interested in that type of a proposal. We were still in the, everybody's in the same boat. If we're going to transfer this, it's all going to be the same type of transfer. It would be a you know, ownership interest that Alcasan will take and essentially told them to go back and not to the drawing board, but if they wanted to take advantage of this to figure out a way to make it palpable to the uh, public utilities uh, uh, commission, uh, we haven't heard anything back since that, that last conversation took place in July or so. So a fair statement would be if somebody's approached because they are approaching communities and to some of the smaller communities, you know, they see a lot of money and I understand that, you know, it, it's uh, but a, a, a message would be to be very careful because it's not so cut and dry and that you should get your solicitor involved um, and understand that there's a possibility that if, uh, the trunk stores themselves would not be able to be included in a deal because the PUC will 
and, and I don't know, I'm sorry, Max, you said much better than I would say, uh, but that the trunk stores would not be included because uh, that they can't be owned um, by a public utility. Um, and that al is always open for discussion, but there would have to be some serious things figured out. Um, and I just bring this up because I, I do get asked, I do see this and um, I'm trying to caution people uh, because it's tough when you get offered, you know, hey, millions and millions of dollars, it does wake people up that, hey, that can help my community. So but from what I'm hearing from you and the team is that you are really willing to sit down and talk to people if they have questions and it's okay to refer them and say, hey, get your solicitor, call Alpha Sand, sit down and talk about it. They'll give you the facts. And Alpha Sand did a really good job up at Seven Springs. I, I, I think Jeannie passed it out or someone did that, that, that paper. It kind of explained the facts. And I apologize. Is that posted anywhere? Remember, there was a sheet you guys did on the pros and cons of all this, or am I not am I thinking of something else? No, you're you're right. We did uh... Can you hear me? I can't find my. No. no. Yeah, no, we, we did send. We did pass that out there. We have been talking to the Pennsylvania Municipal Authorities Association, as well as to the uh, prime sponsor of this of that bill. Um, to our our choice would be to kill it before it makes us all have to spend a lot of money. Um, there are some changes that may have been made to it that make it a little more palatable, but our position right now on that bill in the state Senate is that just, just say no to this legislation. It's not good for municipalities um, uh, and authorities. Okay, so there is that information about the bill out there. And then yeah. my general answer is sort of, hey, be cautious, contact yeah. Alpha do not assume anything. Um, before you get too far down the path um, and go from there. So thank you. I just wanted to make sure where everything was because it is a topic out there, believe it or not. Because like I said, when someone offers you 10, 15, 20 million, any one of us would say, let's have a conversation, <laughs> you know? So, okay, thanks so much. Well, I just want to say this because even though Alcasan is my favorite and I am Alcasan, as we all know, <laughs> The reality of it is, is they've been buying up systems outside of the Alcasan service area um, successfully. And let's not forget, they also provide water service to half of the city. So, you know, I, I, I'm not sure what our role is here, except to say we want the trunks, right? <laughs> I mean, that was our ultimate goal. I mean, you know, Alcasan's end game in 30 years is to own the entire system. Maybe that was Jan Oliver's dream. She's retired now. And I say that in a really serious way, right? I mean, so I, I don't know if if this is, is, is this something that we should keep our eyes on because it's help, happening outside of Alcasan pretty regularly and to the benefit of the communities, right? Will the system be taken care of as well as communities take care of? I don't know. I've been listening to this for about 12 years. I could probably talk to you about the communities that don't clean their sewers now and not even say, you know, I mean, so I'm a little, I'm a little torn about this, even with what Max said and within what you're talking about is this is not just an Alcastan issue. This is a significant regional issue. And I'm not sure that's, I don't know if that's within our purview. So just just kind of putting that out there as a reminder, this is happening all over around us. And, and I would Darla, agree. I don't think no. it's in our purview maybe as the Alpha State Advisory, but you are correct. That's why I brought it up. And it is interesting. I will tell you, there's some communities that really want to do this and it really will help them. I'm For the Alpha San side, I'm just being very careful. And I just say on the Alpha San side, you need to talk to Alpha San because there could be some road, and I don't even use the word roadblock because you have to be so careful, but I agree. I don't know what the right entity is, but this is here. And I have many communities, even outside of my charters that are looking at this and talking to me. And I've been, I've been called up to ask if I'll come and sit in a meetings and stuff. So I'm just trying to make sure that we have all the good information, but it is here and uh, we can't hide from it. I'll just agree with you. 
I, I would agree to keep it on the, the advisory committee's radar and, and agenda because I, I do think it is relatively new. It is happening in other parts of the state that are structured differently than Allegheny County and, and Alcasan. And I think as there are two sides to every story, there are a lot of uh, first run headlines of the millions of dollars the, you know, the shareholder owned uh, public utility that's going to come in and address these issues. And then the, the story is sort of that rate guarantee is only in place for a year or two. What happens, you know, when they have to uh, answer to others and not elected officials and not the appointees to an authority? You know, what happens when there is a, a much larger service area that is going to be impacting the rates? And I do think in terms of, of you know, that contact with Alcasan, uh, I mean, our sort of concern was the first proposals here out of the gate, you know, was, was done, signed, sealed, here's the process. Then it came to Alcasan and then it was, okay, this arrangement that you have with the Z agreements with 83 municipalities, you know, with you know, just the structure of Alcasan in the first place, but also with the, tr the intermunicipal trunk lines and transferring those, you know, don't work for PUC and public utilities. So change you know, Alcasan for us, um, make it so, you know, that this third party you know, has an obligation here to pass ordinances. Well, we can't pass ordinances. So how do we do this? And, and at least our pushback was, whoa, whoa, no, we need to keep the structure of Alcasan intact that we have 83 customer municipalities that all have the same agreement. We've got an exclusive provider provision in all of those. And we would still want to see the municipalities you know, being involved as our contact and not a third party, uh, just because that, that wasn't how the system was set up. And it was only sort of after the fact and when those discussions were brought to light and we had to tell them to get a little more creative and figure out how to do this rather than telling Alcasan how to, to change and, and change our, our processes. Uh, they, they also raised the issue with just the regulators saying they cannot approve a public utility to own these assets that municipal authority like Alcasan has a responsibility for, for certain parts of it. And that was the, the concern now and I will say sort of finally, because this is new, you know, none of this has really been foisted upon the PUC for a determination. These have been the concerns of that third party about even going forward to the PUC. Uh, and so we pushed it back on them to, to get creative and figure out how to work within the Alcasan system rather than changing the Alcasan system to meet their needs. But the final point is, yes, this was conversations. This was a lot of meetings. Uh, the lawyers all summer, uh, starting into last spring, uh, to get these sort of issues brought up. But I would encourage the advisory committee to keep your ears open, what's happening in other communities, and read those newspapers from out east reporting on year three, four, five of a, of a conversion from a public system to a public utility system. And I'll just make one final comment. I promised him I'll be quiet amazingly. Um, it is an interesting two-sided story because if we do get a couple communities that work out a deal and they're able to make the numbers work without transferring it or maybe they're going to fight it and they get it, we certainly don't want to have pieces of the trunk store owned by somebody else in different places like Alpasan owns, you know, the first, I'm going to make this up three miles and then someone else owns the next six miles and then someone, that this for the region is not a good thing. So I don't know where this conversation, I, I don't mean to cause trouble or heading it, whatever. I just worry about the whole idea was to work together in the regionalization. And I just see, I see people not going away on this because of the amount of money it's on the table. So I just think we should keep discussing it. And, um, and Jeannie, I'm sorry, that house bill, is that in committee or I'm sorry, what you said, or is it died or is it going to be? The, the it bill is a, it's a Senate bill that they did a gut and replace in the committee and then passed it. But so much hue and cry took place that, that Chairman Safano said, we're not gonna move it for now. Uh, we're trying to change the for now to forever. Uh, but there are folks who are trying to uh, amend it so that it's not as bad. What I said was we're not 
you know, what they're asking for, the various record keeping, et cetera, from anybody who has any oversight over, over pipes um, is, a, is a great thing to do. And it's probably a best practice. But on the other hand, we're not going to be forced to do it with, with some of the people who are trying to put us out of business holding a gun to our heads. What was that house bill number again, that, um, Jeannie, at this point? Because we can go, mm -hmm. we all can look it up. Uh, I, I will send you the info. I'll okay, send everybody great. the information. Thank you. I'm done, Tim. Sorry. Thanks, no problem. Appreciate the questions. The, uh, have we had any refusals, uh, outright refusals to, to transfer the trunks? Mike? Mike? Mike, you had... No, not not okay. that I uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay. Not at this point. And to follow uh, Ruth Ann's concern, you know, one thing that the municipality also has to think about: if you sell any part of the system, and we, the municipality, can beat up constantly. People want to buy the towers that we have. Uh, all that does is raises the price to your residents. Um, if you sell like a water system or a sewer system. The purchaser's got to make up that money somehow. That money's going to be made up on your residence. So a short-term joy of getting a money is just going to end up costing residents money. Personal opinion. Okay, anything else? Okay, next is grow update from Tim Prevost. Tim? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to share my screen with you. Okay, so I was asked to uh, just provide a quick uh, update on the GROW program. I uh, want to let everyone know that cycle six has been completed. Uh, recommendations were made to our board and the board has, uh, has awarded projects for cycle six. And in the next three weeks, uh, we will be preparing for cycle seven with the municipal workshops. Uh, this. I'm just going to go through three uh, key aspects, progress, performance, and the financials. Um, this, this slide shows all uh, 137 projects that GROW has uh, funded, and the different colors indicate the status of these projects. And this was as of April, where we had 142, 17, 26. Every quarter, we uh, request progress reports from our um, from our grow uh, awardees. So now in July, we have slightly improved. Uh, we have one additional project that was closed out as of July. Um, performance evaluation means that they are going through their post construction monitoring. Construction is pretty self explanatory, and design are typically projects that still are going through some level of design. And we also include in this list the 14 projects that have declined or rescinded the offer from Alcasana. Um, moving forward to performance evaluation, uh, of all the projects that we have uh, taken a look at, there are 40, um, there are 46 projects that we have received final reports, we have assessed, and the, the next few slides will uh, show the results. And we, we have projects that are direct stream inflow projects, green stormwater infrastructure projects, INI projects, and sewer separation projects. This first slide uh, shows the assessment of stormwater volume removal. Now the green column is what we initially assessed in the application process. This is what was basing the award. And then the blue is the post-construction assessment. And this is based off of what was provided by the municipality in the final report through not just the narrative, but also through uh, data provided. So you can see that for the most part, um, post-construction monitoring has been exceeding uh, what our initial assessment indicated. It doesn't mean that every project uh, exceeds the initial assessment. Some were lower, 
but most were above the initial assessment. And that, that indicates that these projects are being implemented very well by the municipalities. Next is overflow reduction. So with the two projects uh, for direct stream inflow reduction, uh, you know, they were not, these two projects were not very large projects. Um, so we have 1 million gallons of stream inflow that we assumed, but post-construction, 2 million gallons of overflow reduction were, uh, were achieved by our assessment. Green stormwater infrastructure, pretty much on par with what our initial assessment was. I and I with 24 projects, you know, we assumed 14 million gallons of overflow reduction. We believe that we've achieved 25. And sewer separation being the complete removal of uh, stormwater from a combined system, we would expect that project to be uh, very high in the overflow reduction category. And those projects have proven to be very successful. In summary, for all the 46 projects to which we have received final reports, you know, stormwater volume removal, we assumed it was going to be 291. Based on our assessment of the data, we're close to 500 million gallons of overflow removal. Um, we need to, I need to caveat that the data comes in various forms. Um, sometimes the data comes back and it's, it might not be to the quality that we would expect. Um, sometimes the data is impeccably great and we very reliable. So we have a process to, you know, go through the data and, you know, be sure that what we are coming up with for the performance, um, uh, performance evaluation is the best available information that we have to give us the best possible, uh, you know, um, evaluation at the end. So stormwater volume reduction is pretty high and overflow reduction. We were assuming for these 46 projects, 58 million, and we're, we're uh, showing 83 million gallons of overflow reduction. So for, again, some projects are better uh, exceed the assumptions. Some don't quite exceed the assumptions, but for the most part, when you put them all together, we believe that this is uh, very successful and as we keep moving forward and completing more projects in cycles three and four and five where the criteria gradually increased, we hope to see this uh, performance trend increase even steeper. And finally, uh, I'm gonna run through some numbers for the financial update. Uh, these numbers have uh, been vetted with our accounting department. So I'm very confident in what I'm about to share with you. Um, Program commitments uh, through cycles one through five were almost $45 million. In cycle six, what was just awarded at last week's board meeting was just over $22 million. The reimbursements that Alcasan has so far uh, provided back to the municipalities, and this is based off of the latest and greatest information I could get from our accounting department is just shy of $10 million of reimbursements. Of that 10, close to $10 million, almost $5 million has been provided back to the municipalities in the reimbursements during 2020 and 2021, during COVID, when the municipalities really could use that money back to uh, help them out. So in the end, um, grow commitments outstanding, almost $54 million that takes into account cycles one through six, deducting the payments and also deducting the uncommitted uh, funds on closed projects. Some projects, uh, the award, um, we may award a certain amount, but if the project is run really well, uh, those projects come in under budget and you know that's good. Um, the money that is remaining goes back uh, you know, it is just uncommitted and uh, it's no longer an outstanding commitment uh, in grow. And with that, that is my update. If there are any questions, be happy to answer them. Um, Tim, this is Ruth Ann. I, I, first, I just wanna say that you, Alpha San and the staff need to be tremendously complimented. 
having been involved with these from filling them out to doing them and the in the effort that, that you have put in and Alka San and the municipalities and the amount of food we've brought out, every gallon helps. So kudos to everybody involved. Um, I know I wasn't at the last meeting and this is probably already discussed. Uh, what is the future of the GROW grants? Um, uh, I know there was only a certain time years. I apologize if you've already discussed this. Um, is it going to continue? Is there a way to continue it? Are we done? Or Because I'm telling you, they have made such an impact in the region. We will continue to have that, con have that discussion with the board right now. You're right. The program is funded to a limit. But the board is very interested in seeing it continue. We'll look at other sources of funding, external sources, because as we have shared many times, the pie is only so large. It gets cut so many ways. When somebody gets a bigger slice, somebody else gets nothing or a slipper. So we're continuing to look at that and try to come up with ways to keep the program funded. I, would, if I'm not mistaken, I, I thought at the last meeting, there was no growth funding in fiscal year 23, 22. That is not completely accurate. It's not funded to the extent it has been funded in previous years as Tim just showed you. A lot of money has been committed through the sixth cycle. Not completely funded, but the program, again, is still a priority for the board. Well, if we can help in any way, Arletta, uh, even myself, please let me know. Um, even if you make the municipalities pay more and Alcacen pays less, I mean, it's just the concept is there and the, and the, and the working together and you know, we need to take care of grow and then that category that takes care of all the employees of Alpha Sand. Those are the two things that need to keep everybody going. But if I can help or whatever, but think about the concept of maybe Alpha Sand doesn't pay as much. Municipalities pay more, get more skin in the game. Just an idea, but thank you. Between that and a 25% rate increase, I'm there. <laughs> hey, if you want to flush your toilet to the best treatment plan around, Hey, if not, then go build your own plant or get a bucket. That's what I tell people. I think Where Arletta would see it if we were sleeping there. For a minute. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody was retired, sleeping. You say whatever you want when you're retired. People, go get a bucket if you don't like out to sit. That's what I said. Sorry. Any other, Sorry, Tim. Any other questions? <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Clearly. At Alcasan. So. I, I. It's interesting, Tim, that you brought that up because I was that was going to be my question about the funding because the last meeting that was, you know, I questioned whether whether uh, the GROW program was going to to continue and, and it, we were told that that no, it wasn't. And it's good to know since from looking at all of those figures that Tim just presented, it's been quite successful. So it's nice to know that we're um, we're pursuing other options to, to continue the program. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, let's go to the construction update. Kim Kennedy, Kim. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The, uh, my screen. So as you know, we are uh, in the middle of the plant expansion. So I thought we'd just spend a few minutes looking at the construction that's going on down here at the wastewater treatment plant. Um, right now we have six active construction projects. The, uh, and I'll go through a couple photos on the next couple slides, but the main pump station flow meters, that was a very successful job. It's gonna be finishing up in October and it will allow us to measure our flow while we uh, go ahead and go into construction on some other areas of the plant. The North End plant expansion, that is the brand new chlorine contact tank at the very Northern end of the site. That's gonna be our new uh, dry weather outfall, everyday outfall. 
the RAS um, pipe and pump replacement project, that's like an internal recycle. Uh, there are multiple pump stations throughout the plant that all need to be increased because we are going to be taking in more flow and therefore need to be recycling more flow within the plant. And the headworks, um, if you could hear in the background when Arletta is speaking, there's like a, a pile driving yeah. happening right across the street from her. Uh, that is the construction for our East Headworks. That's a uh, screenings and grit facility, state of the art, that will be our normal headworks. And now our existing headworks will be the wet weather um, screenings and grit. Parking garage is well underway. Um, tons of construction um, on the other side of us where the parking lot used to be. And then just kicked off the electrical distribution system upgrade, which will kind of distribute the electrical upgrades needed for all of the plant upgrades. So this is our cost summary report through September. We've awarded $244 million in construction projects. Now that doesn't include the parking garage because the parking garage um, isn't a clean water plan cost. So that's actually probably uh, like closer to $260 million worth of construction. And then you can see th these two, the first two projects were done several years ago. Uh, temporary hypo is gonna finish up in October. And that's actually how we're disinfecting right now the system that we put in the temporary hypochlorite storage and feed system. And then the main pump station and flow meters will finish up in October too. The North End facilities, that general contractor actually mobilized last August. So he's they've been on site for 12 months now and they're 25% complete. Tremendous amount of progress on that job. Very hard, complicated construction. Um, and then, you know, just kind of getting started on these other ones. So this is our, this is the internal of the raw sewage pump station here. And these are those um, 54 inch riser pipes that these are the, the uh, pumps all the way down here at the bottom of the wet well. So the contractor, this was all reinforced in concrete. They cut into that to put in these flow meters and then built the access platform around it um, for our personnel, maintenance and operations personnel. This is a very successful project. And like I said, this is, uh, this is wrapping up next month. The pump station looks great. And then I just wanted to remind you, so this is pre-plant expansion. This was what our North End looked like in August of last year before the general contractor mobilized. This was our sodium hypochlorite uh, storage, and storage tanks down here. Um, I think many of us probably parked down here for open house in the past, and you can see how we just get squeezed here between the very active railroad and the river. So very quickly, so I'm just turning your orientation now. Now we're looking back at the plant. Um, between August and November, they immediately demoed the uh, sodium hypochlorite feed storage building um, and really started to level the site. And now you look here at August of uh, last month, and we really are making progress onto this river wall. The river wall is needed because we needed that, like I said, we were getting squeezed there between the railroad and the river, and we needed some more space so that we can build our chlorine contact tank. So actually this was taken last month and they've already have um, all of these in, uh, and then if you can see this opening right here, this is going to be our new outfall. Um, so this is a wonderful progress towards the plant expansion and the increased capacity that we're all hoping for. And then this is the head work. So this is, uh, this is kind of our lettuce building over here, but this is the prep work just in July because um, we just awarded head works this year and here we are already in September, um, and that doesn't even include what they're doing right now. We have all this is all this road is all opened up right now. This will this will be the new 120 inch feed line that comes from our pump station over to feed the well, uh, Headworks facility. So this entire road needs to be opened up, and um, 
our utility tunnel and the feed line needs to be put in. They're gonna do that in 10 months and give us a road back in 10 months. Here's hoping. Um, and then this is just a rendering. I think I've showed this to you before, but this is a future rendering of what that Headworks facility will look like. Um, and then the parking garage. So this is what our union parking lot used to look like, say in May and June of this year, we were all parking there. So they started in July, they uh, mobilized and started uh, site prep. The laboratory is gonna go to the right on this photo, but we're building the parking garage first, getting our people back parking there, and then we'll um, bid and award the laboratory project. And then this was just last Thursday, I took these pictures. And again, even between last Thursday and today, uh, it's just this crane is put together and they're already starting to install caissons for the um, parking garage. And this is what this will look like. And this will be the first thing that you see when you um, visit the plant a year from now or less. Uh, and this will be to your left. This is our security station where you'd get processed and checked in to visit. This would be the uh, parking garage to your left. And then just my last slide, after all of that is built, we have, uh, well, actually we have six more projects because I forgot to include the lab, but um, the CSO bypass and disinfection, um, that'll bid early 2023. We've got some, um, we've got some enhancements to the effluent flushing water system that we need to do. We'll bid that next summer. And then these last three, they still need to go out for design. We have not started the design of the primary said tanks, the solids thickening into watering improvements or the wet weather pump station. So, and that's by design. We're just trying to phase what we can handle down here in terms of our site um, and obviously maintaining plant operations at all times. So we have to, you know, give them precedent and, uh, and continue to make progress with our construction while keeping the plant operational. So that's all I have um, with our construction update, but I'd be happy to take any questions. Kim, Kim Ken Lasota here. You, you said there's gonna be a new outfall. What's mm -hmm. the old one? The, out, the old one will be for um, wet weather. Wet weather. And then so, yeah. you also said that there were new pumps by the stilling well, the, the, the wet well. You showed pictures of those new pumps? Those weren't the new pumps. The pumps are, um, those were upgraded a few years ago. It was the flow meters in the riser pipe so that we can measure the flow. So do, do they like drill into that wet well? Is no. that, they're on the outside though. They're on the outside, right? So the, the wet well is in the middle and then the pumps are around the circumference right. of the wet well. So those riser pipes are just on the outside of the wet well. And what what do they what purpose do they serve if they're not how do they come in contact with the material in the wet well? So that's that's the only time our sewage is pumped. It's pumped one time, and then after that, that that sets the um, grade line, and from that point on in the treatment process, it flows by gravity. So every single drop of flow that gets treated here goes through those riser pipes because that's the discharge piping from the pumps. I'm, I'm just, because I, I know that that wet well has been there forever and it's never, I'm just wondering how you were able to connect those to the material inside the wet well. No, we never connected it to the material inside the wet well. We just connected it on those discharge riser pipes that were encased in concrete along the circumference of that, the, the dry part of that pump station. Okay, well, thank you. Yep. Kim, I noted on your presentation that one of the change words was around seven million dollars on a hundred million dollar project, but it's still a pretty big change order. What is the nature of that kind of a change order? That was for uh, the soils. So the um, we expected the soils to be residual waste, dirty. You know, I mean, this has been an industrial facility for the history way before Alcasan was here. This was a railroad terminal and had an industrial use. Um, but there was some confusion in our specification and our contractor took a different route. So that was our um, 
agreement on how to get rid of the residual waste spoils from that first cut of uh, that they had to bring the entire site down like 10 to 15 feet. So that that's what generated that large change order. Were there core drills done? Say it again, Tim. Were there core drills done before construction? Oh yeah, there were, there were. And there was, I mean, I, I would say that we felt very clear in our interpretation that we expected residual waste soils. We in no way expected clean fill. And it's just a dispute between us and the contractor that's ongoing. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Very good hearing that. We'll move on to Dave Montz uh, regarding the uh, elected officials meetings with the consent orders. Dave? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thanks for having me today. Um, here at Three Rivers, we are going to uh, conduct uh, three elected official meetings uh, con uh, concerning the phase two consent orders. The first one is tonight in Ross Township. And uh, we'll have the uh, combined sewer systems at six o'clock and the separate sewers at seven. And that'll be the, the uh, meeting schedule from there out. On October 5th, it'll be in Forest Hills. And on October 12th, it'll be in Green Tree Municipal Center. And what our goal is here is to educate the elected officials on a higher level of the orders that uh, have been issued. Uh, the separate SOAR communities have received their orders from the health department. They are, they are on the streets. We uh, felt uh, confident that the combined SOAR order was to be released also. And the we had a change of heart. Uh, there was uh, many of uh, the, um, I, I guess I shouldn't say many, there was several points of connection that had no um, capacity rates in them, a percentage capture. And uh, we had agreed that during the six month due process period that Three Rivers working with Elkistan would develop those uh, capture rates based on modeling, uh, taking into account the plan expansions that you just heard about. And uh, that was agreed upon sometime in uh, July and uh, DEP changed their mind. Um, fast forwarding, they um, had several conversations with us. We, uh, about three weeks ago, were able to get them to do a 180 degree turn and we will be um, providing them uh, a updated uh, exhibits that just say during the due diligence periods of a footnote, we will work with um, the municipalities will work to uh, capture those numbers. And we are working with uh, Elkis and uh, Mike's uh, team to develop those, those numbers. So we wanted to get it out to the municipalities where we're at. Our, Monthly meetings are extremely successful with engineers attending and, and managers, but we wanted to get to the decision makers who are going to adopt these ordinances. And uh, we are listening to the communities. Uh, early on in my uh, start here at Three Rivers, I had heard from one of your members here, uh, Mary Ellen, about um, the need to um, separate. So now we have separate meetings that uh, specifically uh, deal with the separate types of source system. So we have a meeting that just concentrates on the separate SOAR agreement, and we have meetings that just concentrate on the combined SOAR because they are such different and unique types of operations. So uh, we look forward to uh, attendance at these meetings and, and, and getting our word out. I know I appreciate very much that we um, that you did do that, Dave, very, very much. So thank you. Thank you for the suggestion. And Elkisan team has been great helping us uh, when we need uh, any calculations or data. So we're working really good as a team in a region. And Dave, I know you reached out that um, you indicated that any member here of the advisory board that wanted to attend those meetings, um, as long as they behave, um, uh, you would welcome us and um, and go from there for support. Is that correct? Where anybody's willing to attend, yep. Anybody can attend. And you're the one that has to behave over. 
oh man, I'm in Florida and I'm trying to work my way back because you know I want to come to some of those meetings and chat. <laughs> so, <laughs> but no, I, I think they're great. Are you, and I apologize, I didn't look at the announcement too close. It's elected officials. Are you letting the engineers and managers and solicitors in those meetings? And Yes. Yes, the they, uh, municipality can bring anybody they want. Yes. Good. Always makes it good. Okay, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, anything else? Any other questions or comments? Thank you, thank you, Dave. Uh, next item is the, any reports from uh, members on activities within their bases? Anybody want to report what you're up to? Or what code with the DEP violations you're experiencing? I just wanted to bring up briefly, um, and I, I will send an email to Jeannie or whatever and request again. You know, we're all trying very hard to communicate with our communities um, by email or reaching out. I can tell you that um, I don't get a huge amount of feedback. Maybe others do. I know that, um, I apologize who had the in-person meeting. Um, I think it was in the um, Churchill area that I still would like to have who everybody, anybody's interested a little offline meeting to discuss how we can communicate with our communities, how we can get more feedback, serve as each side better. I know Lisa, you expressed an interest previously. So I don't know which Alcasan staff member would get, get saddled with me, <laughs> maybe Jeannie. Yeah. Um, I would just like to have a Zoom meeting where we can have an open discussion on how are we all communicating with the municipalities? Are we getting any feedback? What do we hear? What have we seen? How we could have a more impactful um, informative relationship with them to help Alcasan and the region. Um, so I, I, I just will request that um, maybe if it's okay, Jeannie, you could reach out to me and I know sure. Lisa wanted to attend and if any other, uh, uh, I know maybe, I, I know Ken, I still call Ken the mayor. I can't help myself, sorry. <laughs> uh, you know, and Mark, we're on the charters, but just an open discussion. What are we, what are we all doing? Because I don't want this to end up, even though you're all really great people, it just, you know, I don't want it just to be us individually in our opinions. I mean, we should be working with the whole intent of this is to communicate. And um, I know, Tim, you're leading the, the, the pack here, but uh, maybe I just don't feel I'm doing as good a job as I could. And I'd like to hear what other people are doing and how we get more feedback and, and ever. So that would be my request. And if it's okay, maybe Jeannie, you can reach out to me if Tim's okay with that and, and sure. we can have something offline. Hey, Ruth Ann, I have a question for you because I, I've listened to you talk about this, so I'm kind of curious about it, which is most, and I don't, I don't know this for sure, but many of the engineering firms, and I would defer to all the managers who are here right now, many of the engineering firms um, are, the, are, are, are engaging with the managers to make these decisions. And so a lot of the wet weather plan a lot of the work is done at that engineering level, right? So that makes it a challenge for people like me who, you know, can't speak engineering speak, right? And so I'm, I'm just kind of talking a little bit out of this because reaching out to people to let them know about what's going on with the wet weather plan or how they can participate like, how do you envision that happening? Because I would like to understand it a little bit more too, from the perspective that says, you know, who do you think, who should, who should we be engaging with? Because there's this, there's this intermediary called an engineering firm that many of the municipalities depend on to help make those decisions or make those recommendations to the electeds. I mean, am I, I could be totally off base. I'm looking at all the engineers. I'm staring at Kim. I'm looking at Arletta. I'm looking at Mike. Right? I mean, am I off base? How do you see this? Oh, You're I not off base, Darla. Most of my managers, when I reached out to them, to be frank with you, they hooked me up with the engineers. Yeah. Um, they wanted to be the point contact, and then they included their engineering firm also. Um, I'm just trying to get them jump started. You know, love to hear some things before they become too big of an issue you know, keep that communication going. I'm just looking for what other people are doing, but you are again on target as usual, Miss Darla, um, that the engineering firms, at least the ones, uh, communities I'm dealing with, they hook them in immediately. Uh, but I, but, but if, but I would like to hear from people who then don't have that engineering background, like, 
Like, how do you, I mean, look, you know, no BS, right? I, I can probably get away with talking to an engineering firm, right? But for the purposes of our conversation, um, I'm wondering then how the rest of the committee feels because everybody comes with their co core ability to be able to engage. Like I'm looking at Tim, he probably, you know, can do it. I, 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 I learned from Mary Ellen. So I know that there are people here, but then there's some of us that don't do that. I mean, so how do you, I mean, we can't involve the engineering firms because that's a cost to a municipality. So, I, and I, I was gonna talk about this a little bit, if you don't mind. I have real concerns that a good many of our electeds, and this is from recent personal experience, are have no idea because the information is not being shared in a full manner that they understand what they're and they're the ones who sign are going to sign federal orders that i'm telling you i nearly flipped out a couple weeks ago because of something that 30 or 40 years ago, I had to try to explain to someone how their source system worked and they were not aware. Yeah. And I, I have, I think that we have gotten so far away and sometimes maybe the speak is, is too engineering and that people tune out. Um, I think that was always the purpose you know, Three Rivers, way back when we started all this, there were engineers meetings, there were solicitor meetings, and there were elected officials. Those meetings with the basins and the elected stopped. We asked repeatedly that they be redone, and they weren't. Only the meetings that the outside third parties who were getting paid were happening. And consequently, my take is that there's a lot of people who are the ones that have to answer to the ratepayers who who do not have a clear understanding of what this is all about. And you know, I am pretty active in all this. I try to stay engaged. So I'm talking from real experiences. And that's concerning and you know, Dave's, you know, we're doing better, but we, we were asking all along that the basin meetings continued with the elected officials. And that's, you know, I, I wanted to bring this up and I'm glad that everybody that Ruth Ann and Mary Ellen and Darla have all, you know, come at this from their own perspectives. My, my concern from the very beginning is, um, you know, and I, and and I want to say, like, if we're if we if we are as as the advisory committee, if we are engaged with engineers, we we're doing we're basically doing what what Three Rivers Wet Weather is doing, what Dave is doing. Like Dave is is interacting. He's he's presenting all of this material at those meetings, and and those folks are already engaged. And I see where. Uh, Mary Ellen is is bringing up the fact that the electeds are not engaged. You know that I've been to those. Dave, you know I've been to those meetings. Those meetings are mostly engineers and a smattering of managers, and and so it's it's concerning to me. As as Mary Ellen's pointed out, that the folks who are going to be signing the dotted line are not at those meetings and again they're you know they're not as informed as they should be and i don't know who is the best you know translator of all of this whether it's three rivers wet weather whether it's the whether it's connect whether it's um local government academy um or just alcasan or us and that's so you know, maybe it is the advisory committee folks i don't know and that's something that I think it would be great to have, as Ruth Ann brought up, this kind of smaller group to talk about the issue of communication. 
You guys, right. this is exactly why I brought this yeah. up. This point about the elected. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Arletta. May I step in and bring the Alcasan perspective? I'm glad to hear you folks talking about these things, being concerned and being willing to carry the message uh, because it's not just an Alcasan message, as Darla would say, it's our message. We have been working on communication kits, packages, and putting together a training because this committee has talked about that. It's taken a while, but we have those pieces that we hope are going to be able to provide what you need as individuals. And let's face it, you're all coming from different perspectives, from different capability levels, as Darla had indicated. I am hopeful that what we're developing is going to be able to give not only you, but my board and elected officials anybody else the same resources to be able to speak that fifth grade grocery store level to all of these issues. There will be pieces in these packets that are as extensive as full-blown descriptions, but then there will also be little key cards that you could just pull out. And this is what I would talk about these are the points I would hit and we would again go through a training on how to use them work through the process to get your feedback again we're putting this together from our perspective and what we have heard from you up to this point once we put it in front of you give you a chance to go through this training and we get the feedback, we'll be able to tweak it. Maybe we've missed the mark, but what we're trying to do is address exactly what you're talking about to better prepare each of you to be able to help others engage in the process by you being able to effectively engage in the conversation. That's great, Arletta. If that's what's coming down the pike, then I certainly wait, but the points that were brought up here today are really what I was thinking because the elected officials seem that it's hard to get to them. So thank you. I will wait anxiously for the packet and uh, we'll go from there. Coming soon. As an example from my side, um, I've taken my elected officials to pre-nervous presentations, Alcosan presentations and others. And the best way to reach the electeds, in my experience, is you gotta do it in their house. You know, you got to do it in their board meeting and their board rooms. So we've had a full training by gateway engineers uh, and a solicitor and the in-house engineer and myself. And, you know, it is the duty of each municipal manager to control that and deliver that message to their electeds. And the best way we've been able to do it is to do it in their house. I know Dave's making a real effort to try to get people to come to a meeting tonight in Ross and to the extent that he's having his staff call managers and say, are you sending anybody? And, uh, you know, it's just, it's tough to get these electeds to come to these things. So if you're training them in their house and Arletta, if you're giving us the tools to do that, I think that's the best way. We have given municipal managers, lo these many years, access to a number of meetings. And if they haven't attended those meetings and involved themselves, they're not fulfilling their professional duty. Uh, we make sure that our solicitor attends the solicitor meetings and has the answers to the legal questions that are in the agreements. And I think that's really how you reach people. But if you can give us some tools to do that, because I'm more concerned, not with so much reaching the electeds in my case, but reaching the residents. When they, when they see the next rate increase coming, the obvious next rate increase coming, you know, we're, we're beginning to get kickback on rate increases. So we have to be able to deliver the, the message other than Ruthann's suggestion that you shit in a bucket, we should probably try to work toward, you know, uh, the need for this. I wouldn't suggest so, that message in public. Right. So, <laughs> so, so we got to find a way to educate the public too, I think. I think that's the greater outreach. The electeds, you know, if they're not getting the message, it isn't for the lack of trying. Connect, 
Three Rivers Wet Weather, solicitors, engineers. There's been one hell of a lot of outreach by a lot of people, Alcasan, to get them. If they don't have it, they have it, they, they fail at, at their own peril. Tim, Tim, if I may, Mr. Chairman, um, our meetings tonight are geared to that. You know, I've been in this business like all a lot of you, you know, 30 some years. I know what it's like to get elected officials to meetings. We are trying to get them out. Our presentation is very simplistic, thinking that some people don't know what a combined soil overflow is. They don't know what a sanitary soil overflow is. Where they're going to, when you keep, we keep saying about Alcasan rate increase, these orders are going to have a wake up call for a lot of municipalities on their own rates that they're going to have to charge. You know, to get 10% out of a, a separate system, if you're above the gold line standard, that can be a lot of lining. That can be a lot of money. You know, we have a piece of lining that we're going to show them tonight. It's very simplistic. The disheartening part is, like you said, I've had my staff reach out to the manager saying, bring your, your elected officials. I don't know what else we can do, but we've had some communities say, that's oh, just up to our engineer. Well, that's nice, but the engineer is not the one who controls the money. And as all of us know, that's there's right. three ways to get to the end product sometimes. There can be a way to get it that costs a million or a half a million and get to the end product. So we've got to try to educate them. You know, I've offered to reach out. Uh, Alcasan and us work where we're working with combined communities. These orders are really going to take communities to talk to each other because especially on the combined store, when you have the percent capture, it's 10% increase, but it could be two or three communities that have to do it. And if you talk to each other, you can do it cheaper. And that's what we got to get across. It was very disheartening at a meeting for managers and engineers to say, can you put talking points to us together on how do we talk to our neighbor? We are doing that, but that's what it is. And, and uh, Tim and Arletta, you know, 20 some years ago, when we used the word regionalization. They wanted to, to drive us out of the room. Now people realize that. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna see how tonight's go. And then maybe I'll revisit. I'm going to um, Munhall's uh, Sanitary Soar Authority meeting uh, Thursday night. They've asked me to, to attend. I'm willing to go out. I know um, Jeannie's uh, staff is out. We're all out and about. We get a lot of questions. You know, we've been telling these, shame on an engineer if they're not telling their community when they do their reports. Uh, you know, they're, they're the ones that have to tell them. So we are, we are going out. We are trying to educate the elected officials. They are the ones who are going to answer. But it's just not Elkistan that's going to raise the rates. I can see communities having to raise their own rates to pay for these improvements because a lot of the improvements are on the municipality. And what happened is nobody's had these kind of orders for years. Right. Nobody's had this definitive timeline and the definitive amount of removal. So there's there's a big wake up call coming in, in the next um, few weeks. Sorry, that's it. Dave, Dave, well said. And I just want to put a small plug in. I know Alpha Sands involved, but because I have nothing else to do, I'm on the LGA board and we have the newly elected officials course coming up and we train these newly elected officials on infrastructure and sores. So if any of you, Three Rivers, I'm, I'm almost positive Alpha Sands is on the list already. Jeannie does a great job with that, but um, you are correct. We try and start early on. So if anybody has any ideas or wants to get involved, just email me. Um, it will be coming up shortly. I might add just one more thing because I live in the city of Pittsburgh. And so I'm just gonna say this, Kinsey, and I adore the city, you know, I'm a big booster, but I'm a victim of PWSA's incredible rate increases. Now I understand what's going on, right? I get it. But every month I get a newsletter. I, I don't read it. Okay. I'm going to be honest, right? Because all I look at is my bill. So I look at my bill. I see how much my bill is. I see what all the different things are. And then I pay it. So that newsletter is supposed to help me. It's supposed to help my elected officials, Kinsey, her group, the mayor, et cetera, 
communicate to me as a resident. And, and I'm like going, oh my God, I can't even read this. And I pitch it. So I don't say that as a criticism. I say that as a reality, which is all I'm doing is looking at how much it's costing me. And that's what a resident does. How much is it going to cost you? So if you're looking to promote like what it is that you're doing, I would say like a half sentence, you know, rate increase, right? And, and one of the things that happens, and I've watched this over the last 12 years, is Alcasan has taken the heat for those, those increases, regardless. They always have. And at first, I used to think, why? You know, but now down the pike, I understand why, because they have they have their customer back. Right. So they take the heat for the increases communicating to your residents that the cost of water and sewer is going up. It's it's like trying to tell my mom that houses now do cost three hundred thousand dollars. We know they used to cost twenty five thousand. But now they cost 300. I mean, that's what you guys are, that's what everybody's faced with. You're faced with what we met, remember as memory, right? And so it, it, it just, it, to me, it's just like this, right? You're elected being able to have five sentences, checking in once we get the Alcasan stuff to see if, you know, I mean, we've said this all along, the cost of the clean water plan is gonna impact the cost of the region. And, and it's, it's a hard thing to do because we all have memories. You know, my water bill two years ago was only like, you know, $45. So, you know, now all of a sudden you're looking at your water bill and you're like, oh my gosh, it's so much money. Well, it's the cost of doing business. And I think it's, you know, people that want to get elected over and over and over again, have a hard time do understanding that. But, you know, maybe if it's just, they have that one sentence, which is sort of like Alcasan has always taken Always had the customers back is how I like to think about it. I don't know if Will is on the call anymore. I think uh, he no, he's not. <laughs> I think he bailed. <laughs> he bailed. Oh, Kenzie, well, he bailed. I'm, I'm sure oh, wait, but I will tell him in a minute. Yeah. No, I'm sure uh, PwC would also love to stop billing for Alcasan, and it's going to be very confusing when PwC's rate case just passed and is going up, and there's a stormwater fee, and then there's an Alcasan rate case also. So. The bills are going up. The PWSA one's actually not that bad. Um, I don't know what Alcasans is yet, but I'm sure we'll find out. <laughs> Kinsey, I love my water service. I drink it. Love it. PWSA <laughs> is doing a good job. It's just an example about the paper, right? Oh, I don't think anyone reads those. I mean, we just did our stormwater code update and the hearing was people complaining about their water bills, which has <laughs> to do with our code update, but that's right. Hey, well, Darla, read the dang newsletter, will you? There's a lot of effort put into those things. Okay, it, uh, as my position as chair, we're at this for more than an hour and a half. I think it's time we, we started to lose people. Max, on the way out here, do you have anything that you want to add? No, just to say we, we are following the Sunshine Act by posting the agenda 24 hours in advance. Uh, so we've been doing that. We do have uh, the two upcoming meetings that are on the schedule here. And Gene, I don't think we received any written public comment and nobody no, we tried have to not. sign in to give it either. So. Right. Maybe we have no comment. Nothing. I would right. remind us all that the upcoming meetings are October 19th and November 16th. Mr. Uh, Chairman, yes. uh, I, would, uh, I would like to ask the committee to give consideration to changing the November meeting. It unfortunately is in conflict with a board committee meeting. No problem. Uh, do you want to propose a date, Arletta? I will get something out to the committee. Okay, well, we can do that in October then, but let's assume that we're going to be changing that. Um, maybe we could have you zoom in on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, and keep it short. Uh, I, assume, I assume we're going to give everybody a Christmas off. Uh, there's no objection. And without any further objection, um, We'll adjourn this meeting. Thank you all very much.